Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from our Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We'll begin with our news, checking out our headlines. In Colombia, military personnel implicated in the rape and murder of an indigenous girl pledged guilty. South Africa's Ministry of Public Health and Welfare announced on Thursday that the country has reported more than 111,000 cases of COVID-19. Portugal announced new lockdown measures in Lisbon due to a new wave of coronavirus cases. We begin with our news. You stay with us. On Thursday, Colombian police announced that military personnel implicated in the rape and murder of an indigenous girl pledged guilty. The news came from the Attorney General, who announced that his office has charged six members and the armed forces with raping a minor. The soldier sexually assaulted a 12-year-old indigenous girl from the Embera Chami community on June 22nd. Colombian health workers held on protests on Thursday demanding labor guarantees and biosecurity measures for the care of patients infected by COVID-19. The organizations held sit-ins in different hospitals to denounce what they called the state abandonment union leaders also condemned the state's intention to reactivate the economy. <clears throat> In Panama, the Ministry of Health indicated that on Thursday, 1,007 new cases of COVID-19 were reported. The Epidemiological Surveillance System reports 29,037 accumulated cases, of which 1,007 are new cases. Panama has a lethality rate of 1.94% and 51% of patients have so far recovered, amounting to 14,800 recovered cases. Meanwhile, in Venezuela, the Vice President Delcy Rodriguez reported the ongoing COVID-19 situation in the country. También debemos informar que there are 59 new cases of competitors coming from Colombia through Táchira, El Zulia, and Apure. Two more cases arrived from Brazil one from Peru and another one from Ecuador, both of which were discovered in Thatcher State. Out of this last case, two more people were infected. Venezuelan Foreign Minister Jorge Arriaza noted in a press conference from Russia where he attended the Victory Day celebrations that his government shares the vision of a multipolar world based on UN principles. We share this vision of multipolar world based on collective decisions, through multilateralism, the strengthening of the United Nations, respect for the charter of the United Nations. That's why yesterday I also spoke with Minister Lavrov to activate, even in the midst of the pandemic, a group of countries in defense of this chapter, the United Nations chapter, with its principle and objective clearly established. The Venezuelan foreign minister also denounced the U.S. attacks on the Venezuelan people through unilateral sanctions and stressed that the International Court of Justice should consider these measures crimes against humanity. We submitted a file with all the declarations, communiques, speeches from those that govern the United States, the President, Vice President, State Department, National Security Council, among others, which contains their confessions regarding the aggressions against Venezuela, which pursues a political objective of regime change. They have made the Venezuelan people suffer, and there have been consequences for human lives, consequences in terms of disease, and in some way, they confess this in those declarations. Arriaza also noted that several international organizations have called for the suspension of unilateral sanctions against Venezuela, Iran and Cuba to allow these countries to use all available resources to fight COVID-19 pandemic. Several reporters have made statements. The International Red Cross has issued a statement. Several governments and regional organizations have issued statements calling for the lifting of sanctions against Venezuela, 
against Iran and the criminal blockade against Cuba. There have been those who have proposed the suspension of the sanctions during the COVID-19 pandemic out of pure humanity to allow these governments that suffer aggressions to use their resources. Spain has granted Venezuela the request to extradite Enzo Franchini Oliveros, who faced charges for murdering Orlando Figuera during 2017 violent protests in Venezuela. Attorney General Tarek William Sapp took to Twitter to announce the decision. Enzo Franchini Oliveros is accused over the death of Orlando Jose Figuera, who was beaten, stabbed, dosed in petrol, and set on fire alive during street clashes on 20 May 2017. Francini was arrested on Monday in a town near Madrid. And a number of hospitals in Bolivia have partially closed their doors due to a lack of supplies and protective equipment. Torex Hospital in La Paz said it will not reopen its doors until all the necessary biosecurity conditions are in place as eight health workers have tested positive for COVID-19. A similar situation has been seen in Holandes Hospital, which closed its doors after 36 workers tested positive for the virus. Meanwhile, a number of labs have declared themselves in a state of emergency as they are lacking the proper equipment to process COVID-19 tests. And Cuban weatherman Jose Rubiera explained the exceptional characteristics of the Sahara dust cloud that is currently covering the Caribbean region. This week in the Caribbean, we suffered the consequences of the dust from the Sahara. As of Thursday, the phenomenon is moving to the Gulf of Mexico, Yucatan and Central America, leaving behind the Caribbean. Now, why is this exceptional? Because every year there are dust clouds from the Sahara, even several times in the same year. But the concentration of this dust cloud is very particular. In Puerto Rico, for example, there have been several studies over the last 20 years, and no Saharan dust cloud ever had the power concentration that this one has. There are some specialists who say that in 50 or 60 years, this is the strongest Sahara dust cloud they've seen. But this particular phenomenon is also important because it arrived during the COVID-19 pandemic, so it can worsen respiratory conditions. Therefore, the use of max is very very important. And concerns over overcrowding has led Haiti's President Jovenel Moïse to port on more than 400 prisoners as the country battles against the novel coronavirus. A government statement said Moïse was acting on the recommendation of Justice Minister Luc Maine de Lille. The issue was the order to release 415 ordinary prisoners under the Constitution, which allows the president to the right to pardon and commute sentences. To date, the country has more than 5,000 COVID-19 cases and 89 deaths. And swarms of locusts are ravaging the Argentinian countryside, decimating crops and threatening food supplies amid COVID-19 pandemic. In one area, the locust cloud reached 10 kilometers in length, and one square kilometer of the cloud holds at least 40 million animals. Just in one day, they can eat a pasture so big that it would be that it will take about 2,000 cows to do the same. The destructive insects came from Paraguay and seen to be heading towards Uruguay and Brazil. Time for a first break. Remember, follow us on Twitter at Tell Us Your English and on my account at Laura Peters. Back with our news, South Africa's Ministry of Public Health and Welfare announced on Thursday, that the country has recorded more than 111,000 cases of COVID-19. 103 new deaths were also recorded over the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of deaths to 2,205. Authorities indicated that during the day, more than 34,122 tests were carried out in various cities. This comes at some provinces report a lack of beds to care for the number of patients.
Sudanese health workers were repressed by security forces as they continue to protest against the lack of governmental support amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Hundreds of doctors in Sudan temporarily left their past due to the siege of security forces and of some civilians. Public attacks against doctors are commonplace in Sudan. Back in April, there were at least 14 cases of attacks against doctors. According to the health ministry, there are currently 8,889 confirmed cases in Sudan. On Thursday, Kenya's Ministry of Public Health and Social Assistance informed that COVID-19 rates surpassed 5,000 cases. The health body and announced with a total of 254 new COVID-19 cases that the country amounted 5,206 total cases in being Nairobi, the worst hit country, with 1,127 new cases. Health authorities also informed of 41 new recoveries and two deaths to reach 1,023 and 130 cases, respectively. In Morocco, cafes and restaurants in Rabat reopened their doors on Thursday for the first time in three months. The government also allowed to reopen of gyms, hair salons and restaurants in the city at 50% capacity. All venues have to abide by social distancing and hygiene measures. Morocco, where a lockdown has been in place since March 20, has reported 11,279 cases of the virus and 216 deaths. We follow the health measures. A committee came to guide us. As you can see, there is a duct tape between tables and a meter and a half and more between the tables. Also, there are hygiene measures more than before and we are making an effort. And the World Health Organization has held the announcement as a victory for science. The Ebola response was a victory for science. The rapid rollout of a highly effective vaccine saved lives and slowed the spread of Ebola. For the first time, the world now has a licensed Ebola vaccine. This, as the Democratic Republic of the Congo has officially declared an end to the epi Ebola epidemic that broke out in the east of the country in August 2018. No new cases of the disease have been reported in the northeast since April 27. Some 2,280 people died in this last flare-up which is the tenth to have hit the country since 1976 when Ebola was first discovered. However, the nation is dealing with a fresh Ebola outbreak in the northwest. Compared to previous epidemics, this one was the longest, most complex and deadliest. 2,277 people have died. I'd like to take this opportunity to express on behalf of the government all my compassion and saddest condolence to all the families who have lost loved ones. 1,171 people have recovered thanks to innovations in the fight against the epidemic and in research on a vaccine and medication. And half a million Senegalese school children have returned to class under instruction to wear face masks and keep a distance from each other after three months of absence. The government in West Africa stayed shut schools in mid-March in a bid to curb coronavirus infections. Thursday's reopening affects 500,055 children out of some 3.5 million in Senegal, with only pupils who are sitting exams this year returning to class. Other antivirus measures, such as shutting universities, closing the land, air and air borders, and imposing a nighttime for a few remain in place. I'm glad to be back in class because it's been a fair while since we've had classes and that's not good for our school year. We've gone almost three months without coming to school and that's very tricky for us final year students. We are not stressed because we've been studying at home and really we've had four months or three and a half months of rest, but also of getting prepared, working and studying. And yes, we have just started classes again. We are very happy to be back in class. 1.48 million of U.S. citizens applied for unemployment benefits last week as applications for jobless and aid declined just 5% in the past two weeks, a much slower rate of improvement 
done in April and May. According to the latest report from the U.S. Department of Labor, new unemployment claims have continuously exceeded the 1 million mark for 14 consecutive weeks as a result of the mass layoffs in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. The report notes that 19.5 million workers are still receiving unemployment benefits even as the nation has been working to restart the economy. Former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden has reportedly whined his lead to nine points over President Donald Trump, according to a new poll. According to CNBC, all America Economic Survey, Biden is in line to win 47 percent of the vote in the November presidential elections, with Trump standing at 38 percent. As far as the issues currently gripping the U.S., Trump maintains a lead when it comes to the economy, while Biden is ahead when it comes to racial equality, police reform, health care and the pandemic. Time for another break. We'll be right back. Back with our news, the Prime Minister of Portugal announced new lockdown measures in 19 parishes of Lisbon due to a new wave of COVID-19 cases. In addition to all the restrictions that exist in the country, in addition to all the restrictions that cover the metropolitan area of Lisbon, there will still be a set of specific restrictions, of which I would like to underline. In these parishes, the civic duty of home collections remain that is, people should only leave the house and move on the public road in certain exceptions, which are actually quite extensive, which are foreseen in the resolution. And Lufthansa shareholders have backed a 10 billion US dollar bailout by the German government, saving Europe's largest airline group from bankruptcy after the coronavirus crushed travel demands. More than 98% of shareholders, accounting for 39% of Lufthansa's stock, voted in favor of the rescue package. The bailout will see the German stake to take a 20% in the group bringing it back on board for the first time since Lufthansa's 1997 privatization. We find ourselves in a crisis that has no precedent, and Lufthansa has already gone through a lot of crises. And I personally have gone through a lot of crises with Lufthansa. This crisis requires sacrifices, and we as employees are ready for that. But we must not give the impression that Lufthansa is trading the rights of its employees by using the coronavirus crisis. Norwegian Prime Minister Erna Solberg has announced that from 15 July, the country will leave the current quarantine requirement for tourists from European Union countries, which have a low COVID-19 infection rate. The government has decided that from the 15th of July, we will aim to end quarantine for travelers from the Schengen area and the EEA. But, and it's an important but, the lifting of quarantine will require each country to have fulfilled objective criteria. We will maintain the quarantine when traveling into Norway for people coming from countries with high infection levels. India has recorded another daily record in new coronavirus cases as new Delhi becomes its worst hit city. India registered 16,922 new cases in the past 24 hours, taking the national total to 473,105. The health ministry on Thursday also reported 418 more deaths, taking fatalities up to 14,894, with New Delhi causing a major concern with 70,390 cases. Authorities have decided to carry out a house-to-house -house screening in the capital over the next two weeks. 4,000 new cases of coronavirus, but new extra beds were not needed in the hospitals. We can see two things from this, that the coronavirus is not so severe in Delhi. People are getting coronavirus and they are recovering at home, and we don't see demand for new beds. And secondly, it tells us that the number of patients recovering is the same as those being admitted. 
Nearly 100 Rohingya from Myanmar, including 30 children, have been rescued from a wooden boat off the coast of Indonesia, Sumatra's island. Images shot from Indonesian rescue boats show dozens of children and adults, many weeping after they had been plugged from their vessel by local fishermen. Many of them had gone without food for several days. Malaysia and Indonesia are favored destination for Rohingya fleeing violence in Myanmar, with thousands trying to perilous escape via smugglers across the sea every year. Initially, our local fishermen found the refugees' boat, which almost sank. Then, we dispatched an evacuation team to rescue them. We understand so far that they consist of 15 men, 49 women, and 30 children. The minors comprise 10 boys and 20 girls. And severe floods have been registered in China after heavy rains have forced residents to flee their homes in the east and south of the Republic. Across China, the floods have stranded many residents and disrupted traffic. Among the main regions affected are Wenzhou province, Wanxi, Chuan, Autonomous Region, Yunnan province and the province of Jiangxi. Several residents have been relocated to safety as floods have reached up to 10 meters high. Iran has announced 134 new deaths from the novel coronavirus, taking the overall death toll in the country past 10,000. We lost 134 of our compatriots in the past 24 hours, and the total number of victims is 10,130. We call on all our compatriots to follow the health protocols, especially the elderly and those with underlying diseases. We also urge children and young people not to be present in crowded centers, to keep their distance from the elderly, grandparents, and to help them to stay at home as much as possible. Like this, we come to the end of this new thrift. Of course, you can find this and much more other news on our website, Cluster where you can read Opinion articles, watch the special interviews and of course update yourself about the latest numbers related to COVID-19. The invitation has been made to continue with us with Telesur, always together connecting our global calls. Until next time, thank you for watching.